Welcome back everybody. Thank you for returning to the Hillbilly Workshop uh, or Hillbilly Recycling Workshop. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to uh, make this thing in now a rally car. So uh, I want to show you the rally cars usually had the front ends cut out and if people don't believe me, okay, this is what it is. This is the rally car. As you can see, the whole front end is chopped out. They have a little bit more than what I'm going to have in here. And they had the cross beam. This is for actually the mount for the skid plate. But we're not going to do that just yet. We have it. I have this mount all uh, just to build. Um, their tow hook right here is a little different. Um, but as you can see, it's all open. And we so we can have full access to the um, engine, timing belt, and all this stuff. And when I build the uh, turbocharger mount, the turbo will be over here. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do it, but I need a heat shield here. This pulley, as you can see, is a, is a single belt pulley. Uh, I tried making one. Uh, we'll get onto that later. That was that was kind of interesting. It's I have it in the mill right now. I'm trying to fix it, but it's uh, it's pretty funny. And I already have this bar made, and it's upstairs. And I also have a skid plate for it. But what we're gonna do here is, oh, seeing how I'm gonna be keeping the hood from the 4000, it's rusty, so I can cut it all out, and I'll drill holes in it and all that stuff, just like the you know the way Bruno's was and i think strongholds was like that too um we don't need any of this we don't this right here is is for the hood latch i want to keep this as close as i can here all of this sheet metal down here i don't need what it is it's attached to these front legs or these front horns here as is right here it just pinch welded down here resistance welded down here and up in here so what we're going to do is take the sawzall cut down here cut right here this will you know all this sheet metal will be saved and that's that way, and if I cut it right here, when we move the book out of the way, I don't want to drop it. It's a nice book. Um, right here, this will all come out, and then I'm just going to build my own uh, setup, uh, my own box section to put the lights and so forth like that. So let me get right on to doing this, and uh, we'll cut this on, and it should take like five minutes. Here's the, uh, huh, why did they weld the sheet metal of that, but whatever. You know I don't have any uh, square stock to go in there, besides use tire irons. Should work pretty well, goes right into the coop, not going anywhere. Now I'm going to go around, get the back uh, jacked up, let's put the drive shaft in so we can start making the mounts. We are at the uh, point where we're putting in the mounts. I put the rear subframe diff and I put the drive shaft in with just two bolts per side. The only thing I wanted to do was to get the drive shaft pretty much aligned. That's, you know, so the front subframe and the rear subframe are in pretty much alignment so I can make the mounts. Uh, the mounts are going to be tacked in. I'm going to show you what I'm going to use for those in just a second. That's just going to be kind of cool. But we have to get a pretty much rough estimate here. Um, we can we can put everything up and make everything exact later. I mean, we have CV joints at both ends of the drive shaft, so we have to, we have a little bit of play. It's not too worried. And after some of the stuff you see, like with the four by fours and stuff, and the angles of the drive shaft, it's just terrible. But we will keep these as as close to. Uh, you know, um, uh, equal or close to uh, in line as possible. So let me show you what I'm going to use. This, this is this is the major recycling portion of it, and what I'm going to use, and, and why I'm going to use uh, the mounts that I, that <laughs> are going on here. So let me uh, bring it over, and I'll show you. Yes, you see it right. <laughs> This is the rear suspension and differential from a 1985 or 86 McCurr XR4 Ti. And otherwise that, these things are pretty much useless because this diff is open. All the mounts are rubber mounts, unlike the Cosworth. The Cosworth had uniball mounts with rubber ends. And I believe the, uh, if I remember correctly, the uh, 
A irons are actually wider on the causeway. I mean, my three door, I mean, the good, the only good thing is, even though we're gonna chop this one up, I have like five of these, you know, for the mounting places. Um, <laughs> the uh, only good thing is that this is a seven and a half inch beam. It'll actually take um, a full Cosworth seven and a half inch dip from an actual three door. I used it in my three door. It worked. We're all set there. But we're not going to be using that today. We're going to be taking this thing apart, and um, I'll show you what over here on what I'm going to use and how I'm going to use the mounts and why I'm going to use the mounts. That's a, that's also a big thing. So uh, let me get over here. Let's get on to making the uh, mounts for the engine. Uh, this is not my idea. This is an idea from Cosworth or from Ford. Ford Rally Sport of England. Now. You have to sit there and take a look uh, back in the day, and Ford was wonderful, as in giving you all the information they learned from rally to allow you to build your own rally car, because they wanted, you know, people out there rallying. So, what we have to say is, well, why can't we transfer all the knowledge that they put into all the testing that they um, did on their rally cars and put it into ours? Why not? This is a book I've gotten, uh, and what you're looking at, here, I am going to pull out this page. This is pretty much what we are making. Whoops. This is the engine mount. This is a two-wheel drive mount. The four-wheel drive mounts are different. I have uh, my Sapphire has a four-wheel drive, four-by-four four mount, and those are aluminum. Plus, it's right-hand drive, so they're a little different. My three-door RS, that's a Group A car, um, this is made out of steel, and it's an exact copy. I'm not sure if they were, the factory ones were made out of aluminum or not. We're going to make ours out of steel. It works, and I'm going to give you the principle behind it, because the main thing what we're trying to do, we're trying to do a couple things. We're trying to support the engine above the subframe. The big thing is, is that when you support the engine, oh, here goes that. Uh, when you support the engine above the subframe, that way the suspension, all it is is resting on the subframe. If you need to pull that subframe down, you don't have to pull the engine. The engine's not weighted by it. Another thing that happens when you use a mount like this is that you're connecting the two frame rails, the lower frame rails, if you want to call it that. It is a unibody. It's not really a frame, but we'll take it as it is. We're taking the, the, the two lower frame rails and we're connecting it to the, own, to the, to the motor and it's acting as a brace. So you're actually staff, uh, stiffening the chassis. That is one thing that we, that we really want to do. So if we can stiffen the chassis, support the engine where the subframe is not supported and we need to change a component, we can just dump the, the subframe down. Everything is bolted right to the end, you know, bolted right to the chassis. If we need to pull the motor, we can dump the subframe down, pull it out of the way. One thing, four bolts, and it drops straight down. You know, well, you know, four, two transmission bolts, two engine mount bolts. What this does is um, it allows a it allows a lot more room also for getting in there, fixing the steering rack, uh, bleeding the clutch, all that stuff. Because I did this as an experiment on my very first Air Quattro that I have. It's still it's upstairs, and it actually works wonderful. I use a two-wheel drive uh, Coupe GT front subframe, put it in there, and I can now reach everything. Everything is so accessible. This is one of the things I really want to do because I see these people on YouTube, they're using an existing subframe and they're welding mounts to it. What's the point? I don't, I don't really see it. You know, you weld it to the frame and that way you get it out of the way. You can clear stuff around, you can service the car. Now, let's, and the thing is, um, well, I don't want to lose track, but let's uh, get on to doing the mounts like this. Plus, we're going to cut up the subframe. What this does is that this gives us mounts already built, which is awesome. I mean, having mounts already built and just put it in there, you trim it to where you want it and weld it. This, and we're also going to take this apart, not with a plasma cutter, not with a mill. We're going to use a sawzall and we're going to pull it all apart and I'm going to show you that, hey, you don't really need all this fancy stuff. Because I sat there, and yes, I have a plasma cutter, and I have a mill and a lathe and all that. But someone sitting there trying to make this at their house, what are they going to have? They're going to have a sawzall. They're going to have a. They're, they're normally going to have a compressor, whiz wheel, so forth. And 
this stuff is, most people threw all of this stuff away. And I wanted to just, you know, I'm just too much of a pack rat to throw away, but now I got to use it because the Merkur arms, you can't give them away. You can't give this stuff away. Um, and, you know what? I've been blabbering too much. <laughs> Let's just get on to cutting this thing. Oh, another little trick. Um, I've already broken two T40s trying to get these things off so they're rusted in. We gotta pull the hub off. And one, um, one thing is, this thing, this is opposite direction, so you have to put it on tighten in order to get it off. And the other side, you can put it on loose. And so one's left hand thread, one's right hand thread. Now I just have to take this off so I can pull the, uh, um, I want to pull the dip out, but I want to pull the arm off next. So let me uh, undo, the, undo the bolt. take as much as I can um, uh, when I take this off because it's much better to shorten than to lengthen. So let's uh, cut this stuff off, cut it right here, cut it right here as close as I can to the mount and I'm going to cut the uh, shock mount off also and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Okay, now that was terrible, um, but yeah, it was just more shit jobs you had to do. Well, look at what we got. We have mounts right here that we can trim up. We have these mounts. We have four legs, and believe it or not, we also have four transmission mounts. I'm going to make out of these. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I have an idea on how to do it. I think it's going to work. Whether or not it will is another thing, but hey, listen, it doesn't hurt to try. So, what we got now is we have these uh, um, cut up suspension arms. The good bushings, you know, um, hard rubber bushings. And let's try and figure out how to put them in the Audi. Well, I took a look at the arms, and what I wanted on this side, because it's the longest length, I got the thickest arm. The other one has a little bit of a it's kind of thin over here and this is the outer portion um, both mounts fit both arms they're you know they fit fine I just want I'm trying to figure out which is the least amount of uh, fabrication work I'm gonna have to do one good thing is when you cut up all these arms you have the bolts already there you don't have to go searching through all of the uh, uh, bolt bins to see what you have for bolts what I would do what I'm doing is just putting it right here that sets my uh, my depth pretty much so I don't have to worry about it so I'm gonna use that. what I'm going to do if you can see this as you can see Audi has a mount here there's three bolts it's aluminum uh, that was for the power steering or the AC or something like that uh, the mount goes backwards, so there's an ear right here. All the engine support is in this, is pretty much in this line. You know, it's not in this line right here. Here are the mounts. They're just resistance welded with a bunch of goop on them. And it's hydraulic, so this thing moves around. It's, uh, it's you know, there's no, there's no real, nothing stationary in the chassis, or nothing making this as a stationary part of the engine. This is the shorter of the two. Uh, mounts that I have and it's pretty much going to go right there so pull the bolts you know and it's you know I have to you know keep this is the main thing I have to do is I have to get rid of all this and put the mount directly on there 
I'm probably, I have to cut it straight. I have to cut it down like this to meet the plate and I got to plate it all up and bolt and then bolt it in. It's, uh, you know, it's not that bad per se. Just, I just have to cut the welds off and trim it all up and, and use as, you know, and, and just take all this out. I'm kind of curious to see what this weighs because I almost guarantee you it's going to weigh pretty much the same because of all the extra metal here taken out, the hydraulic fluid, even those things, even though these are aluminum, it's, it's an awful big chunk of aluminum. If I can make this, you know, let's say it's within a pound, you're gaining so much from an extra pound of weight. It's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Plus, you can take this out. I want to take this out because I want to bring this back and have a bigger radiator at an angle. And that's just like the Sport Quattro. This is all prelude to the Sport Quattro. I already did it in my Her Quattro, but we need to get this. So let me get a jack. I'm going to jack this up. I'm going to grind this stuff away. And we're going to pull this engine mount off. And then we're going to work from there. Now, the main thing is, uh, seeing I took the part, I don't really care about you know, screwing up this engine because I'm looking to blow it up anyway. The only thing I want to do is to get this thing just off the engine mount. That'll pretty much set my height. See, it just, it just went up. Just a little bit. Because it decompressed the hydraulic fluid that's inside of it and it pulled it up. Now, i got to take this off. One thing I did prior to uh, doing all this is I chased every bolt with a, with a uh, die and I went through every single bolt with a tap to clean up all the rust. There's the aluminum pile. All right, now let's cut this off and then we can start uh, um, Figuring out all the other 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 goodies. Well, it's getting there. want to leave it right there just just to leave it there you know and then build a mount onto this now, actually I like that I like that right there because if I could cut it right here fold it in and weld it in I think it will look actually look pretty good so let me mark that up Well, that's kind of where it is. Let's uh, <clears throat> give it just a quick tack just to leave it there and then we can make the mounting plate to the engine. Okay, we have the uh, mount tacked on. It's not going anywhere. And this is what we're going to be doing. So, the next step in doing this is that we need a bar that goes from here to here for the mounts. Hopefully it'll be relative. I gotta look at my pile and see what I got, but it'll probably hopefully be relatively thick. And then we'll go out here and go the angle and make a mounting system, then attach this to the mounting system. Not really sure how I'm gonna do it yet, but I'll figure it out. I mean, I'll do it. Uh, let me see what I got in the scrap bin so I can weld up some uh, stuff and we can make a mount. Well, this is what I found. I found this is a seat rail from a Vanagon, a uh, second row seat, I believe the main seat or the main passenger seat. These two holes line up with those two holes down there. It's extremely tough steel. I mean, you can definitely tell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it up, trim a little bit of this out, and let's see if we can make this work. I told you, every hillbilly recycling.
just won't do it. Ugh, just have to hog out the holes a little bit. By golly, I think this might be working here. Let's uh, start trimming this thing up. Well, back from the scrap, the scrap pile. Didn't find anything in the scrap pile uh, that I didn't have to really modify to make work, which I'm just trying to, the main thing is recycle everything. You know, hillbilly recycling to make it actually be worth something. So, went up, grabbed a coffee and a cookie. So, coffees and cookies, there you go. Almost as good as Guinness and Oreos. <sighs> so, I thought to myself, said, what can I use that's right there that I'm already using to make the rest of the mount? Because we have to stabilize the top part of the mount because of the forces that are pushing on the top of it. We just can't use a box section and heap it right there. You have to have the triangulation triangulation point there. What I did, I looked around, looked around, looked at it, looked at it, said, well, this right here, let me put my coffee down. This right here is the other half of the mount from the uh, van again. What I did was I drilled out the spot weld. There's only one spot weld for this. this right here. And this right here, if you want to take a look, this mount right here, this hole, if you put it right on there like that, it pretty much matches up with this hole. So you just bolt this in, it'll lay right on top of this and you can weld to the top. Once everything is set, we'll, we'll take it all, you know, once we tack it all in so it doesn't want to move, we'll pull that out, trim all the stuff up, put it on the bench. I got to cut this, bring it down, you know, just small stuff but box everything in. I'll probably make a box section here and a box section here. That way it's as stiff as I can uh, possibly make it without, you know, going to like, you know, half inch, half inch steel. Well, no better time than present. Let me get the grinder out and I'll keep cutting. Oh, it's hitting on the block. Got to bend it a little bit. Ah, crap. Well, there's a protrusion on the block right here, which I didn't see. Yeah, not bad. So, but I, but I got it tight. I just have to tap it down. Now. We're all gonna box this in anyway, so. Yep, it's all hillbilly. Well, fitting all these things up, we have to. Uh, Start trimming a little bit. It's actually hitting this. I didn't think. I thought this was tight, but it's not. So I have to just trim it a little bit. Well, I had to uh, bring it over to the vise, cut it, knock it. I'll trim it. A little bit more um, when I have it tacked in and then I can see where everything is going and one thing you always have to do is when you I consistently take the bolt in and out so you can see exactly where this is going to be so when this thing is up it's going to I'm going to weld it up to the top of this then I'll slice it down and fill in all the gaps and then probably take some actually metal out of here or just some stuff from the uh, junk pile, I mean from the thing that I already cut up, and I'll make the braces up like that, so I'll make it look pretty neat. Hopefully! Let's, uh, actually I think I'm going to tack it, because... Let me get this thing all down. Let's see if we can take the bolts off.
Done with this now. Uh, I have to weld this over here and this up inside here. But I put a nice big long bead right there uh, just so it won't go down. Uh, so when I take the subframe down to do the rear transmission mounts, it's getting there. We are now on to the co-driver side or the passenger side or the right hand side drive, whichever one you want to call it. Design problems over here. We have, we're going to have a turbo manifold over here. We have a starter. We have to clear all of that stuff. And I want to keep it as close as I can to this ridge. That will build me enough room so if I need to get to the starter solenoid, I can get to the starter solenoid. If I need to get to the manifold, I can get to the manifold. There's, you know, the design considerations when you're doing this it, you know, if, you, if it's not going to help you out, don't do it. But we want to, you know, with all these mounts right here, I want to get as much room as possible. I mean, this is a pseudo rally car. I'm using the smallest arm I can. And how I'm going to do it is, I mean, I need to, to get it over to this to, uh, you know, clear the starter and put it on here. I'm going to use the other mount, uh, not the internal mounts, the external ones because they're actually smaller and thinner. And if I can just uh, cut these things down, that way they'll go right here. Um, they're very small. Plus, I think the other ones with all their intricate bends and all that stuff, well, I think will look better on the Sport Quattro. I don't know, it's stupid, but you know, hey, let me run with it. Let me uh, go cut this and I gotta jack that up and pull that mount off. Yeah, but trying to figure out which side is which and which way I want to do it and how I want to do it because you also need to have it come straight down you can't have it bind up anywhere and I want to get as far back as possible let's keep trying let me just let me jack the thing up pull the engine mount off and let's see what let's go from there I'm so glad I chased every thread on these bolts and on these studs just so I could get them out easy. That's the main thing. Found this in the scrap pile. Uh, they were jacking corner weights, I think, for a car. Uh, let's see. Here's the mount. What we're going to do. Well, I mean, the good thing is, is that when I cut it up, I can make two of the mounts out of uh, this one plate. Now, I want to try and get this one relatively close because down there, there's plenty of embosses on the um, on the block, and I want to get this thing as close as I can. I mean, I'm going to cut straight lines first, but there. Can it do it? No, it doesn't. Well, I'll do it later. These are some of the greatest things ever, transfer punches. Drill one hole, we'll put a bolt in it. Drill another hole, put another bolt in it. All right, we'll do that on the drill press, and I'll be right back. We have to figure out where we're going to come put this. And we have to get the angle right. See, we have to clear the starter. We have to go here. So it has to come in. You might as well sit down and figure it out. I don't like it like that. So if it's that, I don't want to bring it in a couple inches. Let's just start cutting. Uh, I'd say about that much. This is right here. There's like that, that angle.
bigger the glob, the better the job. Now, we have the, tr the engine mounts in. This episode is getting kind of long, so basically what I'm going to do is just, well, do the transmission mounts in the next setup. Well, I'll just split this into two. Here we go. We got the engine mount right there. I mean, they're kind of welded in. I still have to do the back side. I have to sandblast it. I have to do a whole bunch of other things. I have to weld it inside here and clean it up with a grinder. Over to here, we have this mount in. This is on there. I've got to grind that when I pull the motor out. This has to all be trimmed and sandblasted and painted. Next thing we're going to do in the next uh, episode, we're doing the transmission mounts down there. I already have a whole, whole bunch of hillbilly recycling in order to do this. I mean, yes, that plate over there was a cheat. I didn't reuse some of the parts. Sorry, you know. Uh, but we're gonna, well, we're just gonna get, you know, keep going on, and we'll get to the Sport Quattro after we do these transmission mounts, because we're just gonna copy them pretty much over there. A little different because you're doing with different factors and uh, different setup, but other than that, it should be fine. So remember, you can do anything you want. I'm nothing special. Just hillbilly recycling. So have a good one. See you next time.